Hi guys, I'm Andrea and this is A View. Today we're going to be painting an old country barn with a snowy pathway and some fences, wooden fences. Um, I'm going to provide three different links. One of them will be with me giving the instruction without anything in the background. That way you can play whatever music you like to listen to when you're creating. Uh, the other one is going to be some like down home style country type music, guitar music, relaxing. Um, but if country is not your thing, I'm also going to provide a version that's a little bit more universal. It has a little bit more dancey, happy, upbeat type music. So you can choose whichever one you prefer to follow along with and the links are right below. If you enjoy my videos, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel so you're kept up to date on any new videos that come out. All right, let's get started. So, I usually use a palette of black and white and then yellow, blue, and red. Those are our primary colors. So these are the only colors that we need to do the painting. And I'm starting out with a wide brush because we're going to start out in the sky. So the background, we're going to be using a wide brush and I'm going to dip it in the water. And I'm going to be picking up white with a little bit of yellow. So we're gonna mix it together on the side of the plate and a tiny, tiny little bit of red. And I mean tiny bit. Red is such a strong pigment. The color takes right over. So the goal is a really, really, really light yellowy color with a hint of peach. And we're gonna come down from the top a little bit. And we're just gonna go right across. And it's okay, you can see the different colors in there. That's all right, you can keep blending, you can blend them together to give it a nice smooth consistency. Or you can even leave the different striations in there, the different streaks of color because that, there's clouds that look like that too. So we're bringing that across. If you need to spread your paint out a little bit more, you can dip your brush into the water and it'll help your paint spread out a little bit better. Now we're gonna be mixing up a little bit of a purple color for the very top of the sky. So we're gonna grab a little bit of blue. We'll put this over here and a little bit of red. We're mixing those together to get a dark purple color, but we're not gonna use it just like this. We're gonna mix some white into it. So this will give us a light purple color. So we're gonna put this at the top Now you're gonna rinse the purple off of your brush. So you want a clean brush and you're gonna pick up white. Just white on your wide brush. And you're gonna take the white and you're gonna go below the purple line. And you're gonna blend the white into the purple, lightening that line up in between your purple and your yellow. So you're taking that white and you're gonna blend it in down into the yellow a little bit and up into the purple a little bit and then back down into the yellow a little bit. 
So you're pulling a little of the purple down into the yellow and a little bit of the yellow up into the purple. And you're gonna rinse off your wide brush. Now, we're gonna start on our background mountains. And I'm gonna use a fan brush. A fan brush, they're, they're so great. You can really make some nice trees with fan brushes. Thank you, Bob Ross. <laughs> so, we're gonna take a fan brush you're going to pick up blue. And you're going to take the blue with the fan brush and we're going to dab with the fan brush a little bit of a mountain over here. And the barn is gonna be in this area. So you don't have to worry about this area so much with the background mountains, because we don't need them there. The barn will be right about here. So we're gonna come over here and do a little hill, come back down and then another little hill. I'm just dabbing this blue on. Get a little bit of texture with the blue with the fan brush. Then we're going to pick up some yellow. You don't need to rinse your fan brush unless you have a lot of paint on it. But the yellow is going to mix in with the blue. Now here is where you don't want to dab right next to each other over and over. You're just going to get blobs of color. You want to skip a spot and turn your brush back and forth a little bit to give different color variations and textures to your paint. So you're kind of like wish wash wish wash back and forth a little bit with your brush as you're dabbing that yellow on. Heaviest at the top of the mountain because that's where the sun shines at the very top and then it gets more gradual as you go to the bottom. You want to keep some of that blue to anchor and shadow at the bottom of your mountain. So this is just in the very very background. Don't worry about the detail work too much on these because they are going to fade off into the distance here back and forth a little bit with your fan brush keeping at the top more with your fresh yellow and then gradually bringing that green down I'm gonna rinse my brush off more yellow Now rinse your fan brush and you're going to take your clean fan brush and you're going to pick up some white. So the white, think of this, this is snow landing on the tops of the trees and the mountains. So this is the same thing, you're going to kind of back and forth as you're dabbing your fan brush, kind of wish wash back and forth just a little bit, keeping at the top more because that's where your snow is landing more, at the very top. So it's lighter at the top. And then gradually, here and there, you can come down with it. Add a little bit of snow. You wanna keep the bottom nice and, nice and blue for your shadow. I'm gonna rinse this because it's getting a lot of green on it. Put more white. are 
the whitest. White, white, but very tiny. Okay, now let's put in that barn. <laughs> We're gonna go back to our wide brush and I'm gonna load the wide brush with the red and I'm just gonna dip the very tip of this in black. And then I'm gonna come over here where the barn starts and we're doing the side of it. So you're just going to press the brush and pull down. Press and pull down. I'm just doing this three times and it doesn't matter where the black lands. It's mostly supposed to be shadowing at the very top. And the bottom we're going to go over with some snow. So don't worry about the bottom of the barn right now, just yet. Now, the front of the barn is going to be a brighter red. So with the front, you're going to load it with just red on the wide brush. You're going to turn it to the side and angle it just a little bit here to make the peak of the front of your barn. And then you're going to angle it the other way, the same. You're going to mirror that peak. And then just come straight down with that bright red. You're not worrying about the bottom too much. We're covering that with the snow. And then we're going to pick up white with your wide brush and I'm going to start out by making a line where the roof line is. Now it doesn't come over as far as your wall over here because the roof it has a little bit of a slant like an angle this way. So it starts out further over to the right and then you come down like an overhang over the edge over here. So I'm going to come down from this roof line at an angle and it's okay if your, your brush picks up a little bit of that color because the snow is it's going to have a little shadowing in it. And then I'm going to pick up more white and I'm going to come down the front side of it. And I, I can see now that my angle is off a little bit, so I'm going to go back in with some red and bring it up higher. Come over with it. There we go. See? Make it up as you go along. <laughs> We're going to clean up the bottom of the roof line in the very front there. So I'm going to switch to a tapered round brush. And I'm just picking up white. And coming across like that. With a smaller brush, you can go in and put your roof detail in the front a little bit tighter. So I just took a little bit of uh, black and went right under this roof line to shadow it a little bit. You don't have to do that, but I just wanted to make a line to separate those.
Now you can rinse your brush and I'm going to be switching to a finer detail, kind of like a line brush because we're going to put in the barn door outline and the windows. So you want to go about halfway between where your, your ends of this side of the wall are. We're going to put in just the outside white area of the barn door. Just the outline. And it's okay if the red mixes in with your paint. That looks even more natural. You don't want everything perfectly blocks of color. It doesn't look natural if you do that. So we're going to put in a small window over here. So you're just making a box shape. My box is crooked. Cross through the window. And over here. Doesn't have to be perfect. We're going to be putting some trees in front of this barn, too, so that's going to change it. your brush and we're going back to the wide brush so now we're going to start putting in some snow here and this is still wet it's going to pick up in our white when we go over it and that's okay because you want some other colors to be pulled down into your white snow you it, it can't just be white or it would be like that so we're going to put some white on our brush and then we're gonna pick up a little bit of blue and come over here and mix your white and your blue just a little bit. Like that. So we're going to start under the barn door and we're going to bring that snow bank over here. I'm flipping my brush. And straight out. I'm going to pick up some more white and bring that back and forth. We can bring the hill out over the blue, but we don't want to lose too much of that blue because that's, that's our shadow mark underneath the hill. So we'll bring this across here to just add in some of that color, pull some of that color down. Adding more white to my brush. Putting a hill here. I want to put in some shadow into the snow. So I'm going to pick up a little, a little bit more blue and once again the tiniest little hint of red to give it a little bit of a purplish color. So you're going to get a color about like around like this. 
you want to use purple, more purple or more blue, that's that's up to you if you want to go a more purplish color. But this I'm going to add some shadow in this snow here in front of the barn. Still gonna highlight these with white at the end. Then we're gonna take that bluish purple color, we're gonna start creating our pathway. And our pathway, this is a hill here. The pathway kind of veers over and starts right there. And you're gonna come down diagonal almost to the corner here, but not quite to the corner. You're putting in your path. This is gonna be the road, the snowy road going up towards the barn. And then over here, this hill here, the pathway comes down diagonal but it gets a little wider at the bottom so it's going to be more narrow at the top and you're going to come down a little bit straighter than when you did this angle this one comes down to about the middle of your canvas here in the front so you're going to blend this blue shadow back and forth like that just lightly you're just lightly blending to bring that shadow across. And then you wanna do that over here a little bit. Bring your shadow back and forth across. There. A little bit in down here. Okay. This hill needs a little shadow. Okay, now we're going to be putting in a fence over here on this side, so it's going to be white. So we want to put in some dark shadow color so that the fence stands out. So I'm going to take blue on my round tapered brush and I'm going to put in some blue here. Then I'm gonna pick up a little bit of black. And start out at the very bottom of where your shadow is. And then as you come up, you're just gonna kinda of dab the brush so it kinda of breaks up a little bit so that you don't have a straight line across there. Putting that darker area in here so when we put the fence across here that snow on the fence really stands out behind the darker background and I'm gonna take this and just kind of come across here and mute some of this blue down a little bit I don't have much paint on my brush I'm just it's a little bit I'm just kind of shushing it back and forth a little bit to mix it in there and break up some of that real bright blue. And then I'm going to also take this and I'm going to come over to this hill here and give the illusion that some of the trees are coming across here at the base of this, where this hill meets this hill. There's some trees that are growing in here. So I'm just dabbing breaking up, up and down, up and down, dabbing here. I 
And we'll go back in with the, uh, the fan brush and put some highlights on there. Take your fan brush, put a little bit of white on the very tops of these bushes here. Push in your tree. And same thing over here, a little bit, just to break up the dark areas. So it looks like snow and some bushes that are a little closer up. You can go back in and put a little bit more white on the very tops now that it's a little drier too. going to be putting in some trees. We're going to start with the one tree we're going to put, it's going to go right up the middle of where our barn door is there. And I'm using the larger taper brush just to create the trunk of it. So I'm putting black, I'm mixing a little bit of water in with my black also. So you're going to take the, the tapered round brush and just a little bit above the roof line. So you're gonna come back down, fill that in a little bit because trees always get wider at the base. So you want little footies, as Bob Ross says, little footies to come down and around with the tree. So it goes wider at the base. Come down over here a little. And then, I like to make the top of my tree kind of split off into two directions to break up that, that wide trunk. And when I come up, I'm rolling my brush back and forth and then pulling away from the canvas as I come up so that it gets smaller and smaller. Branches always start out wider and get thinner and thinner as they come out. So. That's it for the trunk of this with this brush. I'm going to switch to a smaller brush now for all the little branches that come out. I'm switching to a small detail brush. It's kind of like a line brush. It's a little bit longer. Now you want to get enough water in with your black paint so that it, it flows nicely when you're pulling the brush and rolling it to make those squiggly branch shapes. You want enough water mixed in with the black so that it flows really nice. So I'm mixing some water in with the black. You want it nice and liquidy. Then just choose where you want a branch to come out and back and forth, back and forth, and gradually pull away from the canvas. And then at the base, you want it to just be a little bit wider so it makes sense for it next to the tree. Another one, back and forth. And you kind of let the brush go where it wants to when it's forming these branches. With the only control of the base gets a little wider, right where it attaches. So then you're gonna come off of these branches, lifting away, back and forth. Okay, if it lifts off the canvas for a little bit here and there too. Back and forth, rolling. Back and forth. This is your creation. Trees are very personal. Trees, everybody makes trees so differently. Now 
gonna get a little crazy. <laughs> any mistakes in the background you can just go over it with a branch. <laughs> okay. Now there's another tree next to that one over here at the side. This one's up a little higher than this where this one started. right at the back of the barn. Right there. These branches go right through the other trees' branches. smaller tree which is down here at the bottom of this little hill here there's a little little section of grass and little sticks and stuff so we're just gonna take the black and kind of just back and forth there's no rhyme or reason just a little bit of putting a little little bit of dark color. So that's going to be the base of where our tree comes out of. And this one is shorter than these. So this is going to be smaller. Do three at the top. brush you can go ahead and put in a fence post here <clears throat> and another one here and another one there And then once 
too rushed. So you're going to rinse the black off of your brush. And you're going to load white onto it. This is your, your fine line brush. So you're going to take the white and where these fence posts are, you're going to go in front of the black. It's okay if your brush picks up a little bit of the black into the white, perfectly fine. It makes it look like old wood and snow landing in places and it just gives it more depth. So I'm going to load more white onto my brush and then I'm going to come across with the fence with this white. So there's a line at the top and a line at the bottom and get some more white. Fences, they don't stay the same direction. They they go to wherever the next post is. So here. So over here in this area, we're going to have some old tractor tracks coming around next to the pathway. They're not going to go over the pathway, they're just going to be over here. So I'm going to take my round table brush and just put the highlight of where the hilltop is with the white, the bright white snow. And that comes down like this. So this is the this top of the snow okay. here. Just so I know for reference. While I have the white on this brush, I'm going to highlight these snowy hills with the white here, and I'm gonna come down a little ways here to highlight this. Kind of defines where the path is going a little bit more. Now you're going to take that bluish purple. So we need to remix the color. It would be you take some blue and some red, makes a purple color, add white to it so you get a light purple color. And then you're going to take this purple and you're creating those dips in the snow where the tractor came through, the tread marks. So there's one, and it comes out from the same point and then gets wide. purple. So we're going to go back and forth, 
creating some shadows with purple there. And putting a little bit of purple down at the bottom, coming up to shadow that pathway here. And it's no rhyme or reason, just shushing what's left on your brush onto the canvas where that path is. brush off. Now we're going to put in a cluster of trees that are right here. So we're going to go back to the fan brush and I'm going to pick up some black and then I'm going to grab a little bit of white with some black on a fan brush. And I'm right here is where I'm going to fill in and put a few bushes right here. So you're turning the fan brush back and forth because we just want some gray bushes, something too detailed. Because we're going to put a fence in front of that. So just a little bit of this gray. So you're going to rinse your fan brush. Now you're going to take white load your fan brush up with the white. You're going to highlight the tops of these bushes, these gray bushes. So you're going to take the white back and forth and skip a spot, back and forth, skip a spot, back and forth. You don't want to use these fan brushes where you're do -do 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 right next to each other because you end up with a blob. You need your highlights be separate from your shadow so you want to leave some of your shadow in there to create that separation so you don't end up with one big blob. All right so now it looks like a, a snow covered bush because we are going to put a, a, the fence right in front of it there. So I'm going back to my tapered brush circle. So we're going to take our tapered brush and we're going to mix a little bit of water into the black so it has good flow to it. It's starting to dry out a little bit. So you're going to load this round brush up with the black and the first thing we're going to put in is a board going straight across. It stops right there. Now the back is the black is picking up some white and that's all right. It just makes it look like that old gray wood. up more black. We're going to come over here and we're putting in the corner fence post. It's going to start right about here and it comes straight down your canvas. So you're just coming straight down and it's pretty wide because it is a corner post. Then we're going to come over and we're just using black. And you're going to come straight down right along with your path. And it's the wood slats are going to get wider as they come to the bottom of the canvas because they're getting closer and closer to you. So with that perspective, they're going to get wider and wider at the bottom. And 
then there's a, a bottom board down here. You're going to keep with that same angle as the top one. And once again, it gets wider at the base, wider at the bottom of the canvas, like that. Now we're going to put in another post over here. So this is going to be a little bit more angled than this straight post. This one is kind of going a little bit angled this direction. So we're just filling this all in with black right now. We're going to put in our highlights that really bring out the wood and what's doing what here soon. Another, another post. This one's angled even more. And then there's going to be another post closer here that's going to be even more angled. Because this fence is kind of falling over. And then here, you're going to start where this fence is, and this gets While you have the black on this tapered brush, we're going to go across the, the pathway here and there's a fence that's much smaller than this one. It has little posts and it starts down here. I'm just going to put, they go the same, the same angle, except once in a while there will be one that's kind of twisted or turned because they don't all stay in place where they're supposed to. So. These are going to be the other fence. Right down to the bottom. Okay. Now, we're going to switch to our, our smaller brush, our detail brush. black on that. So you're going to mix a little bit of water in with the black paint again. And this we're going to do the support lines. Across. This comes down to this one. Here. Just kind of follow the direction that the post. Now, we're going to pick up our round brush and get white. And we're going to put a hill right here of white. And it's okay, it's going to mix in with that black a little bit, and that's all right. So you're going to pull the white over. So 
now that's kind of like a little hill next to where your tracks are. And you can actually go in and put a little bit of white next to those tracks to blend them in a little bit and highlight where the snow is next to, next to them. Just break up that purple a little bit. white with my round brush and I'm going to put white on the top of that post. I'm going to put white on the top of this one and this one here. Then I'm going to go over here and I'm going to dab white on the top of these posts too. We need to put in a little bit of a, a brownish tone into the wooden boards over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some yellow. I, have, I cleaned my round brush. I'm picking up a little bit of yellow, a tiny bit of red, and that's going to give you an orange color. You're going to take this orange color and go straight down the corner posts. Now your black is probably going to mix in and the white is probably going to mix in as you're pulling down. That's okay. It's going to tone down that orange a little bit and make it look more like a natural wood color. So you're going to take the same orange color. You're going to go down this board. You don't want to go all the way down and lose your detail here. You're just highlighting in the center of it. across here, I'm just lightly putting some, some of those orange highlights where the sun might be hitting. Just to give it a little hint that it's that wood color. So a little bit in here, in between these. You don't need much. It really goes a long way here. And now the posts. We're going to come straight down over everything where the posts are. Look at that. Nice. <laughs> Yay. That's awesome. If you want to do these over here, you can just a little. Just put them here and there. Getting that highlight.
putting a little bit of brownish color into the pathway just to give it a little variation. And I'll go over it with some white highlights. Like a little snow pile there. tracks just at the very top. The bottom let them go. You already got that going. Okay. Now we're gonna put in some shadows over here next to these fences. So we're gonna mix up a little bit of blue. We're using the round taper brush and some white. So we're going to do that light blue color that we did before. And that blue is going to be a shadow color for over here. It's mixing in with my brown a little bit. That's all right. So we've got the blue shadow over there. You're going to take that blue shadow and anchor these posts over here. So you're just taking your brush and just back and forth at the base of them just to put in kind of lightly, shush, 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 a little bit of a light shadow here at the base to anchor all of your posts. Thank you. 
going to be mixing up an orange color. So I'm scooping up yellow and I'm gonna put it over here on the plate and then a little bit of red. You know, red really takes over quickly. So we don't need a lot of red in there. Just a little bit to make this orange color. And I'm going to be adding a little bit of water so it gives it a nice flow so that the orange flows a little bit better. So we're gonna take this orange color and we're going out here to the edges, the tips of our tree. And like in the other class, back and forth, back and forth, just a little bit and we're coming out from the tips. And I'm actually gonna add a little bit more red because I like a little bit more of a reddish orange on the tips of mine because it gives that sunlight appearance, like the sun is just hitting the very tips of the branches. And I'm coming out and creating branches where there aren't any. So we're, we're filling our tree out even more with this. And it doesn't have to be all the way at the tips. You can come in here and start out from the center with one, wherever you want to put it. This is your creation. over to the smaller tree and do that there. Now, while you have a tiny little bit of this orange on this little brush, Come over here to this mountain area in the background and just put in a little bit here and there, just a little bit of that orange color just to break up that monotony of the color in that mountain back there. And you can do that a little bit over here too. So it looks like the sun is maybe hitting a little bit over in the background there. Now. the orange highlights at the end and wherever else. Now we're going to add some snow to the branches. So you're going to rinse your brush. You're going to take the same little detail brush. You're going to get white and just load it up with a white. Lots of white on here. And you're gonna go into wherever there are two branches that meet where the snow would collect. You're just gonna put like a blob of snow right there in the crook of the branches there, here, over here, wherever the two branches meet. Here's some. You can come out onto the branches a little bit if you're feeling brave. <laughs> if any of your branches got a little too thick, this is a good opportunity to thin them out with some snow on top of them. branches that are coming out here sideways you can bring that white along them a little bit with that snow color
here you can put some of the snow highlights on these little touches down here. <clears throat> And then at the, out at the very tips of the branches, I put a little bit of white highlight coming out. when you're doing branches out at the end just softly like you're barely touching the canvas to take we're gonna mix up some more yellow we're using a taper brush a round taper a little yellow and a tiny bit of red again make the orange color so you're gonna take this orange color and you're going to imagine the Sun is shining from this direction we're gonna come down lightly with the orange on this side of the tree trunk, putting in those highlights from the sun with this orange. You don't need a lot, just a little bit highlight. And then you can come over here, highlight with a little of that orange color on this side of this tree. And then again on this one. While you have that orange color on there, just hit the very front of these. And as it as you come down closer to the bottom, you're just gonna gradually taper off. Because the sun is gonna be hitting right here the strongest. take the taper brush you've cleaned it now we're going to mix up some blue a tiny bit of red and white so you're getting a purple color you're gonna take this purple color and on the opposite side of where the orange is you're putting this purple color in for the shadow behind the tree. Got a little white in there. So come down. Just it's every so often you're just coming down the trunk to put in a little bit of that purple shadow. Now, since the sun is coming and hitting it here, we're going to add some of that dark purple shadow. You're just lightly depositing a little bit back and forth like a broken up line and you're coming out into the snow to deposit some of that purple color behind the tree to shadow it so you're going to come down below this one and do the same thing you're holding the brush kind of against the canvas a little bit and you're not pressing too hard it's a very light feathery type of back and forth and then this tree here, you're going to do the same thing. Come down, 
imagine the shadow behind it because the sun is hitting it from this angle. Then you can go back and soften it up a little bit. And this is a hill too, so we can have a little bit of shadow in here. you can wipe your brush off so it's completely dry or clean and dry even so that nothing is on it and then go back in and soften those lines up where you put your shadows blue shadow behind the trees really makes those trees come to life. It really, they really pop out. Now, let's talk about the barn. <laughs> so I'm going to switch to my detail brush, my small detail brush. And I'm going to mix some water into black take some black and I'm gonna put it over here by the red and I'm gonna pick up some red and mix the red and the black together this is gonna give me a nice maroon color this is a great shadow color for red I'm gonna take this and I'm running across under the roof line Barn. Create a shadow. Looks like I got a little crazy with a branch. <laughs> so I'm going to bring this new shadow right across here. So I'm going to take this maroon color and I'm going to add in a shadow next to the white edging because it was pretty messy. <laughs> so I'm just kind of cleaning up the edging of my barn door. color and right here where the edge of the barn is on the darker side I'm going to really bring that line out so that way we know where that edge of that barn is there it starts now I can clean up my window frame <laughs> Clean this up a little bit by going out around the outside edge with this maroon color. Clean that up. Sometimes when paint, you just want to have fun and throw that paint on the canvas. Here's where we, re we refine it. I'm gonna clean up this one over here too. I 
And then I'm gonna take that dark maroon color and we're going to come over here to the front and we are going to put a shadow from the roof right up under there with that maroon color. So we're creating that nice shadow under that the front side of this roof. wipes of that dark color you can come down with just to add some detailing into your boards if you want to. your detail brush and now we're going to mix up a little bit of orange so we're gonna take yellow little bit of red just a little bit mix up that orange color heavy on the red yeah heavy on the red <laughs> we're gonna highlight where the Sun would be hitting this front side of the barn. Well, I guess it's the side of the barn. But... So that gives that sunlight feel. done. Here's the finished one. I put a little cardinal in mine. Let me know how it went in the comments below. And thank you so much for taking this time to paint with me. Have a great day or night. <laughs> Thanks guys. <laughs>